This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now, know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Thursday, July 22nd, 2021, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, the Bahamas getting a vaccine donation to fight COVID-19. We continue our series on gentrification. And it's just hours to go before the opening ceremonies of the Olympics in Tokyo. So let's start the morning off right. with a loved one is the best start to the day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. <laughs> LaDawn, I love you. Sharing a cup of tea with you. Yes, yes, even though it's, it's a bit And as you can yeah. see in the background, everybody, <laughs> these balloons, she is ready for the big oh, yes. five, one tomorrow. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, how does it feel to be 51? Uh, not quite there yet, <laughs> but yeah. It's, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a pretty good day. I won't be here tomorrow, so mm. I'm celebrating now. Last few days. So what are you gonna do today? What are you gonna do for your last day in this age bracket? Take, take lots of photos. I'm gonna get my hair done today, and I'm gonna welcome you guys. No, yeah, well, one question. One question. I know the viewers and everybody in the newsroom wants to ask. <laughs> Will going into a new age change you? No, it just makes you stronger oh. and wiser. Eh? I, I think so. I would hope so. I gotta get some so, knowledge from you. Why? And you know, women don't like tell their real age. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna be 40 tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> Does LaDawn look 40 and I'm younger than her? <laughs> <laughs> He's almost 50, guys. LaDawn <laughs> is nowhere near 40, but the big 4 the more for our LD. Uh, congratulations on seeing that big 40 the last day in the 30s. She's gonna take a lot of pictures today. Yes, definitely, definitely. So I'm gonna, find, I'm gonna find you a gift yeah. tomorrow, but let's go for this gift today for this Janice mm -hmm. Uniform Center. And the question today is the Bahamas is one of only two countries that officially starts with the T-H-E. Can you name the next one? Okay, let me get you a try. And it's not the United States of America. Uh, no. So the number to call in is 502-3870, and you can win yourself this nice lunch by courtesy of Janine. Give but before we, I, I'm not giving no hint, but before we get to all of that, let's take it out to the streets where our Lloyd Allen is standing by. Well, good morning, Fisher and LaDawn. Happy birthday ahead of schedule, LaDawn, and happy, well, a great start to your Thursday morning, Bahamas. Today, we're giving you a first look at traffic, and this one coming in from the intersection of Abundant Life Road and Soldier Road. But first, we give you a report from police overnight. They say that eight accidents occurred with damage, one with injury, and five persons remain in hospital. Now, around the capital, we do want to remind you of some ongoing road works, particularly in the area of Blake Road, West Bay Street. Of course, if you approach that area, you're being asked to approach, approach rather, with caution and with care. 
at the intersection of Village Road and Shirley Street. We talked about some roadworks in that area. That, of course, has concluded, and so it should be a smooth ride for motorists approaching that area. Then at the intersection of Hay Street and Market Street, the traffic light there has been down for some time. And so, of course, if drivers approach that area, you're asked to approach with caution and with care. At this intersection, again, Abundant Life Road and Soldier Road. We're talking this morning about pedestrian safety. And, of course, from the Road Traffic Department, they've indicated a few reminders to pedestrians, which include approach right at the edge of the road. Uh, they ask you to look both ways, but also to listen. And once you begin to cross the road, they say continue that listening process because oftentimes what may happen is you may hear a car before you see it. That's a quick look at some t safety tips, rather, for pedestrians and a quick rack up wrap up <laughs> tongue tied this morning a quick wrap up of your thursday traffic report and now a we'll look at weather as we wake up to 81 degrees partly sunny this morning a building high pressure ridge along the sahara dust trickling into the area will affect the weather conditions over the islands throughout tonight fall areas weather partly sunny hot and a bit hazy with the chance of an isolated shower or a thunderstorm mainly over the extreme northwest Bahamas becoming fair and warm tonight. Breezy in the southeast Bahamas, high temperature 93, low of 79. As we look ahead to Friday and Saturday, those are your weather 89 in the day on Friday, 79 at night, and the same for Saturday. It's shaping up to be a great weekend. Just under 3,500 more AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines are in country today thanks to a donation from the British territories of Montserrat and Anguilla. British High Commissioner to the Bahamas, Her Excellency Sarah Dixon, organized the vaccine's donation that arrived at the Lyndon Penling International Airport on Wednesday afternoon. The spike in positive COVID-19 cases prompting questions about the rapidly spreading Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus, which at last report was behind 83% of the cases in the United States. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Nakia Forbes noting that while it hasn't been demonstrated that the strain is in this country, this cannot be ruled out. And with our close proximity to North America, where Delta is the primary circulating variant, it's highly likely that Delta variant is here. So we await that information, but it could be contributing to what we're seeing in terms of this increase in the number of cases. So what do we need to do? We need to really follow those public health measures because those will work, not get Delta. And vaccines are also effective to not get Delta. If you had one dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, you'd be protected from being hospitalized from the Delta variant by 71%. And if you've had two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, you will be protected from being hospitalized from the Delta variant by up to 92%. Healthcare professionals experiencing a myriad of issues due to positive COVID cases, daily trauma and non-communicable diseases all demanding their attention as they are strained and stretched just like the hospital's limited resources. Princess Margaret Hospital Administrator Mary Walker revealed these are the same group of workers who have been on the job from the very beginning. I think some of them are uh, actually roasted or toasted as we would call it. Burnt out. Burnt out. Um, almost to, to the point where you're saying, um, yes, they need a break, but the challenge is there with the clinical presentation every single day. For the past 17 months, the Salvation Army has been assisting 250 families every month through its grocery assistance initiative, the Red Shield Program. Community Relations Associate Melanie Coakley noted, though, that unfortunately, the program's funding is set to end in August. That program was about fifteen dollars to $20,000 per month. Um, in comparison, when, we, when you looked at um, COVID relief, when we first started, um, we were averaging $45,000 per month. So you, as you can see, it's a, a drastic change, and we understand that. Also making news this morning, the Court of Appeal dismissed the application for a stay of the ruling that gives the children of unmarried Bahamian men the automatic right of citizenship Wednesday. Attorney Wayne Monroe, who brought the matter to court, explains. The judge hasn't made a declaration, although they have given the interpretation of Article 6. Persons want to know what happens with people who say they can get the benefit of it. Yes, they can show up. No, the government won't give them status. And the only real positive result of it is since we know what the court's interpretation is, if the government goes to detain 
or deport anyone who's born in the Bahamas who says their father is a Bahamian, they would be able to go to court. The Margaritaville Nassau Beach Resort now open for business. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Menes, officially opened the modern facility located at the point in the heart of downtown Nassau. He pointed out how this property will complement the revitalization of the city of Nassau. But there's just one problem. There are too many derelict buildings in the city of Nassau. They are eyesores. While some of the old buildings can be refurbished, many will have to be demolished. And my government intends to address this issue judiciously through legislation and other legal means. And once this is done, through legislation, we will seek to ensure that buildings in the city center are no longer abandoned and left to deteriorate. The island of Exuma is booming again thanks to a significant uptick in tourism arrival numbers. Administrator Deborah Moxie Rose says increased airlift, along with a peak in domestic travel and cruise ship visitors, is helping to boost the economy. There are three international flights daily, and about nine flights operated by American, Delta, and Silver Airlines on Saturday. So yes, we are seeing quite a quite a boost. We've even seen a surge in domestic tourism. I think Bahamians are opting to stay at home this summer, so um, Exuma is one of the options for them. On your mark, get set, go, and sprinter LaCathara Cooper is off to the 2020 Olympic Games. Her story, straight ahead. During this pandemic, it's our duty to ensure that all citizens, residents and visitors are adhering to the COVID-19 safety protocol. Every person shall practice physical distance between themselves and others who are not of the same household of no less than six feet. I am Ambassador Amanda Etchko of the COVID-19 Enforcement Unit. Save a life that may be your own. This message brought to you by the Ministry of National Security in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Watch our live channel to keep up with what's going on in the nation. News updates, we've got you covered. Tune into our radio stations with just a swipe. On the road, on the go, we're here with you. Available for download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. Week we explore the, the idea of gentrification and how it has impacted over the hill communities here in the capital. Today, Lloyd Allen concludes this series examining some of the challenges and tools needed on the road toward urban development and renewal. In part one, we explored the impact of gentrification from a longtime resident who says the biggest changes identified has been the slow replacement of a once close-knit community to one filled with transient residents. Dr. Jacinta Higgs from the Ministry of Social Services and Urban Development says the impact of change is deep and can affect families and communities in many ways. Installing walkways, uh, water pumps, making sure that they are installed as the people need them and where they need them, then also removing all water pipes, all rusty water pipes, replacing them with new clean uh, water pipes for uh, running water. Dr. Higgs argues that these efforts are designed to usher poor residents into modernized and functional homes and living spaces, but like most initiatives, there are drawbacks. Gentrification, though, as it involves all these essence, usually comes with some negative impact. And so, as well as this urban renewal development or this development of communities. And so sometimes the contractors who are employed uh, to help carry out the work, they would go into the community and they would demolish buildings. And those buildings have historic value. 
Additionally, she says many descendants of areas like Congo Town and other parts of Fox Hill, and by extension, the Eastern Road, were uprooted by affluent families purchasing properties in the area and forcing many out. They came in, they said they want to improve those areas. They bought out a lot of those families. Thank God there are some families still on Eastern Road. And then they relocated the majority of the Fox Hillians into what they call New Guinea, the heart of Fox Hill Village. To curb the impact of gentrification, Dr. Higgs offers this advice. Most of these communities now um, will now be uh, assisted by the economic um, free zone, the media, as well as uh, the civil society organizations, the schools, the churches, working in concert with the government must ensure that we mitigate and to ensure that the majority of people living in these communities um, improve. Well, her dream was to one day make an Olympic team for 17-year-old Akathria Cooper. That dream came sooner than she thought as the Big Red Machine of South student was selected as a member of this year's team headed to Tokyo. I was excited and nervous. Like, I didn't expect it to happen so fast. But I was excited, happy for myself. My friends were supporting me all the way through. Uh, the colleges, they, they messaged me. Um, my coach was happy for me. My mommy was happy for me. Everybody was happy for me and supported me. So what is Cooper anticipating and expectations? I don't know, it's a big stage. Like, well, the only disadvantage is that COVID has happened, so like, no fans will be there to watch me, but it's still a big stage and I'll just try my best there. I expect to do good, Re represent my country, make my country proud of me, and I'm gonna try my best to make everybody happy. Yes, taking pictures with everybody and recording videos so with them a little known last season this one was a breakout one my goal was to just pr and everything in it, um, all my events and just get faster now, this was a good season this was one of the best seasons ever last season i just moved nassau and it was like nobody didn't know me nobody expect me to be like this and then this year, I just surprised and shocked everybody. It started off with me on Zoom practicing with my coach because the emergency orders wasn't allowing us to practice. And then we started practicing, and then I just keep working out because I know I had to make everybody proud, make me proud because I have something for her. Just a day before she leaves and begins that long trek to Tokyo, preparation has been key. Training every day at 4.30. If I'm not training, I'm probably away running. And if not, sleeping, getting ready, <laughs> resting. And she has already had that experience running with the big girls, having finished third in the 20 meters at the recent B3 Nationals last month. I was excited. I wasn't scared. I was just happy. I think I could have beat her right away. Well, I just want to... That's Shonde and all the rest of the teammates encourage me because they're older than me and they have a lot of experience. So our bags are packed and she is ready to go. I just obey in the, the order where they give us. If we can't go a certain place, I won't go that place. Um, it's a lot of tests you have to take, like a lot of tests. You got to fill out health visas. It's a lot of work. Right future, they're wishing her auntie in Bahamas the best of luck in Tokyo. Well, despite clouds of caution hanging over Tokyo, Japan, due to the increasing COVID cases, the Olympic Games host city is an interesting place to visit. Here's why. What breathtaking images of Japan's capital, Tokyo. But it wasn't always that way. According to Wikipedia, what started out as a fishing village named Edo became a prominent political center in 1603. By the 18th century, Edo was one of the most populated cities worldwide with over a million people. However, in 1923, the city was devastated by the great earthquake Kanto and again by bombing raids during World War II. Over 
time, though, the city rebounded to become Japan's leading center of business and finance. Several major investment banks and insurance companies are headquartered in Tokyo. Tokyo has hosted several G7 summits, Fortune 500 companies, and was the first Asian city to host the Summer Olympics in 1964. Asian, Americans, and other nationalities make up the more than 13 million people living in Tokyo. The residents enjoy the lights of several tertiary institutions, museums, performing arts, theaters, major movie productions, and two pro baseball teams. No wonder Tokyo is said to be the largest metropolitan economy in the world, according to a study done by PricewaterhouseCoopers. I'm leaving during our 40th independence anniversary here from a former Olympian from Grand Bahama, my brother from a different mother. Here's Jay Philippe with that story. Born on the 16th of July, 1955, Fletcher Lewis is a Bahamian former long jumper who competed in the 1976 Summer Olympics in Montreal, Canada. But it all started at St. Vincent de Paul in Hunters, where Lewis competed as a youngster. He then moved to New Providence, where he attended St. Augustine's College, where he blossomed into an elite multi-sport athlete. Back then, there were no high schools on Grand Bahama that we were able to go to just like that. I, was, I lived in a boarding school for five years. And because of that living environment, my athletic sk skills in other sports started to come forward. After lunch, we went and played softball. We went and played soccer. We went and high jump and long jump. Every day. That's on the weekend because during the weekdays, you know, you were in school. Believe it or not, Lewis was able to obtain a basketball scholarship where he eventually won conference player of the year and team MVP. With those accolades, he could have attended any university in the Midwest region for basketball, but that's when the unexpected happened. I was about to sign to go to Iowa State for track and field because I came off the basketball court and went, went and won the junior college indoors long jump championship. Not one meet under my belt, won it. Eventually, I went to the Kansas Relays. You know, I wasn't able to do anything because of the weather. Went to the Wichita Relays, which I won. And he went, you know, 25 feet for the first time. And was on my way to Iowa State when Coach Jimmy Tons, the University of Florida coach, called and said, we have one more scholarship left. And it's mine if I want it. The dual sport athlete then sat a new school record of 26 feet, one and a half inch in long jump at the University of Florida that lasted for 18 years. Won the Florida relays, qualified for the Olympics, and went to the Olympics and became a finalist. But because of a slight injury to my my hamstring, I wasn't able to compete at my best. The former Bahamas national record holding long jump shares that representing the Bahamas in track and field was an experience of a lifetime. I competed for the Bahamas at the Pan Am Games, but coming off surgery, all these scars and stuff you see was a part of that. But I came, went and competed and didn't do my best. And then I came for the national team where I set the Bahamas record in 1976 or 26, four and a half. And on my way to the Olympics in Montreal. From the backward of Hunters to Gainesville, Florida, home of the Florida Gators, as we continue to celebrate 48 years of independence, we salute Fletcher J. Lewis, a trailblazer in the community of Grand Bahama, for the impact he has had in sports. Did you know that there are over 30,000 Bahamians with diabetes and another 23,000 with pre-diabetes? Each year, this number is expected to increase. Many people who have diabetes are unaware. If you are having blurry vision, feeling thirsty, urinating frequently, or are unusually tired or losing weight despite a healthy diet, you may have diabetes. If you have a parent or sibling that has diabetes, you are also at an increased risk of developing diabetes. If you have noticed any of these symptoms, it is important to see your doctor who will perform the necessary test to confirm the diagnosis. Together, we can beat diabetes.
1,600 inmates incarcerated at the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. There are a number of rehabilitation services designed to assist in transforming their lives and becoming contributing members of society upon release. These include various training courses, counseling, and even gardening, which over the past few months has flourished as a growing trend among many of the inmates. Inmate Keto Pritchard says he enjoys farming and assisting in the Remand Center Garden. He shares some of the crops he has helped to cultivate. I was working in the garden for a month now, and the variety of fruits we have is pumpkins, do melon, cantaloupes, jalapenos. Acting Director of Minimum Security or Maximum Security at the facility, Gerald Stevens says farming is an opportunity for rehabilitation. It will um, prepare them to go out on the road so that they'll be able to um, um, invest in their own farm and to um, um, make a living for themselves when they leave this institution. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On this day in 1954, Michael Eldon was ordained as an Anglican deacon at Christ Church Cathedral. And in 1971, Deputy Prime Minister Arthur Hanna revealed the design for the new coat of arms and the new national motto. During this pandemic, it is our duty to ensure that all citizens, residents, and visitors are adhering to the COVID-19 safety protocols. Not wearing a face mask is an offense and is liable on some reconviction to a fine of $200 or a term of one month imprisonment or both fine and imprisonment. I am Ambassador Jasmine Scott of the COVID-19 Enforcement Unit. Save a life that may be your own. This message brought to you by the Ministry of National Security in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. In just a few days, the Bahamas will be represented at the Miss Super National Pageant in Poland. And our queen, Naisha Tillis, is ready for fierce competition. We caught up with her recently to talk about this unique pageant, preparations and their expectations. This is my seventh and final pageant because I'm at the age limit and this has been a personal dream of mine to represent the Bahamas on an international stage and showcase all things Bahamas. It's considered one of the top five pageants in the world and the reigning Miss Bahamas Supranational Naisha Tillis says she is more than prepared to bring home the top prize. Uh, my name isn't on the sash, the Bahamas is on the sash. And when persons would refer to me at this pageant, they'll be referring to me as Bahamas. So for me, I wanted to ensure that I took, I left no stone unturned. So speaking, uh, runway, um, literally hair and makeup and learning how to do that to ensure that literally no matter what happens, I'm prepared uh, and the Bahamas will be well represented. A major accomplishment for the 28-year-old who beat out some 40 competitors that gave her the shot to represent the Bahamas internationally. A pageant she says once again put the country in the spotlight. So I was granted this opportunity by way of a virtual competition created for countries with no national pageant or director. And the Bahamas fell in that category because we do not have a franchise here in the Bahamas for that system. Uh, I was interested personally in participating, therefore I reached out to the organization about it and I found out about this virtual competition that they had created for countries like the Bahamas. I entered and competed with 44 countries from around the world to give the Bahamas its first victory in this virtual competition. What acts of the increase in COVID-19 cases is a bit of a scare for her as she competes face-to-face -face in Europe. The former first Miss University of the Bahamas said this. The competition starts next month. However, I go a few days earlier just so that I'm able to get adjusted with the time difference and to adhere to COVID protocol in Poland. Each country has a different set of requirements and I just want to ensure that I am keeping myself safe and everyone that I'm going to be in contact with. I believe we all have a part to play in terms of how we uh, adhere to the protocols required and I just am planning to just take all of the necessary precautions with social distancing, wearing my mask, doing the necessary quarantine, which I had already had planned, and I'm doing extra days just once again to ensure that I'm staying safe. And when she's not engaged in pageantry or strutting her stuff in a fundraising event, Tillis says she's focused on her career in the arts and mentoring young girls. 
I would have just written a book. It's called Uncaged, Release Your Inner Queen that talks about my journey through pageantry, my the ideology of beauty, walking into your confidence because I wasn't always this confident person here. And I just want to be able to share that with other women and girls and pour into them. I would have gotten a life coaching certification and I plan to explore that a bit more. Such an eloquent young lady. All the best to her in Poland. Yeah, we got some... This you morning, a lot of famous are representing us overseas. Well, yeah. they went and Google this answer, I think. <laughs> the winner this morning is Antonio Roll. And yes, the Gambia, the only country outside of the Bahamas that starts with the. Did you know that? No, I absolutely did not. Did you know that? Antonio no. Roll, you can pick up your nice lunch pack here from the Broadcasting Corporation of Bahamas. Today, all courtesy of Jamea's Uniform Center. And the big 4-0 is tomorrow. Does the dawn look any day? You're not going to be here, so let me serenade no. you. You want my Michael Bolton or my Luther Vandross voice? Ah, uh, both. Let, let me hear. Happy birthday to you. Good job. Happy Good job. birthday to you. Oh, Jesus. Happy birthday. Good job. So is it is it, do, is it is it really real that you celebrate life or you're just getting to enjoy just, life? Just getting 40? to enjoy life at 40. Really? Yeah. So oh. imagine me, I'm enjoying, 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 enjoying life because I'm over 40. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and be sure to stay tuned into the ZNS Network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition and the Bahamas tonight at 7. And just before we go, we'd like to send out a special congratulations to Aaliyah Johnson, the daughter of our very own Portia Johnson, who successfully passed her LLB recently. And a special, special happy birthday to my second father, Gus Lewis, over there in Harbor Island, celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, too, and enjoy your vacation. Well, I'll be back on Monday, but then after Monday, I'll be gone. Enjoy, until enjoy. Have a great day, everybody, in my best voice. <laughs> Goodbye. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station.